And May opens up as March ended. Got a weird little blur here. Um, with uh, the French continuing to attack, this one hex. I tried to look. Can I shift it over? There is weakness over here. I just, it would take too long to shift the attack across, and it would be telegraphed, and the Germans could slide over there. Just keep going at the same space. This is one of the best terrain pieces that I can attack. Uh, I've got clear terrain there. And with a damn good roll, I got a six, and I think the uh, defense got a one, actually. Um, I ended up doing 17 points of damage to eight, which is pretty damn good. But, um... Not quite enough to break it. Needed a little bit more. And the minus two of the trench definitely affected that. And like 107 points attacking that. This is one of the things that feels a little funny. It feels like the attacks cause too much damage even when they're not terribly successful. Uh, I'm not sure I really agree that the losses should be at the kind of levels we're seeing here. Of course, there's the variance of the table, but it feels a little funny to me, but it may be the necessary impetus to help motivate some of these attacks, along with the, hey, you got to spend it or lose it, uh, but to motivate non-pure artillery barrages. All right, let me see what I can do about that little funny black spot. Punching into another turn here in the... Uh, May offensive. French moved their main assault over to this hex. Uh, it wasn't this week. They did 17 hits to 12 for them. Again, you know, the advantage on the attack, grinding down the opposition, it's not like the Germans could afford to attack, though. It's just being able to mass the manpower against a hex, the additional manpower that allows you to do this. The German machine has mostly war was worn down during the last offense during the big offensive i don't think they're gonna f have to fight during uh 15. in fact this is kind of like in la grand guerre where if your opponent throws an offensive you kind of don't have to you get to spend as the supplies you need to you take losses that make it impossible to make an offensive it's going to be tougher plus we have the withdrawals that have been constantly happening the british also aided by launching an attack here. Now this wasn't very effective. Um, both of these have a terrain modifier in addition to the trench, which just makes life worse on the attacker. Uh, but the British attack was mainly meant to try to strain the Germans a little bit more. It's just really a diversionary effort. They can't keep it up and keep pounding that. They also wanted to destroy some of their Canadian forces so that they can get their replacements into play. Um, so they're going to be swapping those out. They do open up a little bit of weakness along their line. I don't think the Germans can afford to take advantage of it in counterattack. I'll have to think about that a little bit next turn, though. Um, Germans are beginning to have losses mounted, though. And they're going to have to start bringing new units back into play. Uh, they don't have to worry about the swapping in and out so much, though, now that they have piles up there. The French still have to kind of worry about it because they're trying to maintain an offensive, so they have to build full strength units and then swap out the lesser strength units. But they can afford it. They're, they're launching the offensive. They've got this huge excess of troops uh, that you can see along the line there. Just much bigger stacks. Uh, to get those stacks, they had to weaken themselves elsewhere, but the Germans can't really afford to defend against this and make an offensive somewhere else uh, and keep things safe on the British front. So, uh, it's kind of a tricky situation for them. Pushed ahead through the uh, fifth turn of May, and these really don't take very long. I'm just taking huge breaks in them. Um, played some, uh, uh, what is it, flying colors up here, which I was less impressed with than I had hoped. Uh, it was way too fiddly for the amount of ships that involved in it. Anyway, uh, Continuous assaults on here. Two more attacks there. The Brits staying out of it. Mainly just the French funneling the troops. You see the big stacks in there. Uh, and uh, the Germans pushing more and more in. The Germans are still losing slightly more than the French in terms of troop strength. That's not really important except it, uh, because it's not breaking the German army. It's not like where the French were, where they w weren't able to hold their line. As long as this keeps holding... And I'm not losing more than the French are. And 
by significant amounts. I am losing more. Uh, it should be okay. The French supplies are beginning to wear out. They, uh, they may have enough for two more attacks this turn. They may have to call the offensive off and come back in with a later offensive. Of course, that gives Germany time, to, uh, a later one this year, that gives Germany time to recuperate and build up its forces too. So, you know, whatever stretching point they're putting the Germans to uh, is kind of being thrown away if they take a break. But the problem is supply. Uh, you have to spend the supplies. Once you get to a certain point, the French have a very low limit at 150 compared to the amount of troops they have on the board and the amount of supplies they produce. They produce 40 a turn. And then they also have, you know, this requirement. They have to get under that 100, stay under that 150. But they're not producing enough supplies and certainly not enough troops to just keep this offensive going forever. Well, supplies are really the problem here, but... If we could keep going, the troops would become one uh, very, very quickly. And those are harder to replenish. I'm only getting four of them a turn, uh, which works out to be 28 a month. And I'm losing them in a pretty close to the same rate as I'm losing supplies. Well, after the fifth turn of the month, the French offensive's halted. Um, they just don't see a, a point anymore. They're running their supply lines down. They're low enough. I don't remember what they're at. They're at 20, 30, 40, say under 50 points. They're going to get 40 more next month. They don't have to do anything. They're going to get 40 more the month after that. That puts them up to the 130 mark. So late um, May, June, July. Late in July, they may launch another offensive, maybe with more British support. At this point, they're rebuilding their forces. They get to rebuild at a faster rate than the Germans do because they're getting... Uh, well, in th every three rounds, they get 12 strength points. The Germans, I'm sorry, every two rounds, they get 12 strength points. The Germans get only 10. Okay, that doesn't sound like a big difference, but then you got the Brits also throwing in some significant points. Now, the Brits might end up having to launch an offensive. Uh, they had to launch one before because they're Australian forces. Uh, they need to to use the re replacement point that they have. And this is one of the problems that the Brits have to do is they get replacements and have nowhere to put them. And they don't have a tremendous amount of Australian replacement counters. So like the Germans, they have to cycle those through pretty quickly. They come in every other month, one of those counters uh, with four strength points. So it's not a huge deal, but, uh, you know, it, it does put a sort of a limit on them, and they do want to take advantage of those replacement points. There's no reason not to. They have the supply points to expend for it, and we might see an attempt to coordinate an assault at that point. But the French just don't see a point to continuing. They're not getting a good enough return on their investment. And if their supplies start to dip, that'll make them somewhat at risk against the Germans. There's no feeling in this game like they're of the historical situation, which was these fights just pressed on and on and on and kept drilling man manpower until the countries basically break. Uh, that happens in La Grande Guerre. The motivations in that game force you into that. In this game, the motivations don't. The motivations to keep your supply total below a certain amount. That's the only motivation there is. Uh, now you write back and say, well, the, the attack did not work. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I just don't feel like it captures the feeling correctly here. Uh, it may capture the damage, the effects very well. It feels like it does, um, but it doesn't feel like it gives you the reason to drive the actions that you would take. The relaxing of the French offensive opens up a weakness, and the Germans open fire here and destroy the fortifications down here. Uh, we're getting close to Verdun here. This is territory the Germans initially took in their, historically took in their initial advance. Uh, but, I've knocked this entrenchment down. It's now, uh, there was a fortification there. The, it's sort of an exposed position and can help me kind of leverage my way through this river. It's just sort of a statement to the French, okay, 
Well, now you've got to commit some troops there. You've got to actually defend that a little heavier. Six strength points just went down, as well as six demoralization through an expenditure of artillery supply. The French don't know what the German supply situation is. It could be quite bad. Uh, that expenditure is kind of a, hey, fuck you, man, I can do this. You know, I'm in much better shape than you think type of statement. Now, it could be a bluff. The French could decide to launch their attack uh, thinking that the Germans have bluffed. Now, they really haven't. They still have a significant amount of supply here. <sighs> the French want to recuperate. They're not going to. But it just shows you some of the gamesmanship that's in play here. Uh, they're going to instead reinforce this sector. In fact, if they don't reinforce that sector and, can re and continue with their assault, they can continue with it and reinforce it. Um, but if they, they choose to ignore this, there's a good chance the Germans will attack. They have a, a local superiority there that's fairly high. And continued rebuilding and withdrawals brings us to the end of May and into June. I found uh, this one German unit that I had had here, this 10-5 mountain. This is a mountain assault unit. Somewhere there has to be a mountain unit that equivalents with it. I don't know. I don't see an 8-5 mountain. Uh, so I'm just not sure. Um, you know, maybe it was something that should have been withdrawn and wasn't or whatever. It, it's just, uh, I don't think that's the case. I looked pretty hard for the 8-BR everywhere, I think. I don't know. We got these seven, five mountains. Yeah, with all the different strength points and so many different counters and them coming in and out this way, you know, it's just a, it's a real headache. And how, however it works out, it works out. Anyway, moving into uh, that June turn, we'll be getting 65 more demoralization points for the Germans and some new supplies. Not enough to force an attack, I think. The French feel like they have enough force to try to push it again, but they want to wait until they have the uh, supplies to be able to keep pushing and keep pushing. They don't know where the Germans are, and the Germans actually are in pretty good shape supply-wise, especially after they get their additional 30. So, uh, probably best to just stand around and hold out. We'll see.